Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go through the Weber Kettle Snake Method in depth, step by step. Now the snake method is perfect for them long cooks like your briskets, your pulled porks, your ribs, and all of them nice low and slow style cooks. You're gonna get 10 to 12 hours plus burn time out of it. And it's perfect for any beginner who's just picked up a Weber Kettle and they wanna have their first crack at a long smoke. All right, so to get started, we're obviously gonna need a Weber and then we've got a charcoal chimney, I like to use them because they're nice, easy to use, and they're safe as well. There are a couple of fire lighters, a lighter, some smoking wood, and some briquettes. So we'll waste no more time and we'll get stuck into it. All right, so we'll get started by taking off our lid and our cooking grate. All right, and then we basically just want to start, if your briquettes are close by, grab them out the bag or you can pour them in and stack them around if you want. Basically, you just want to create a domino of briquettes around the rim. We're gonna go with a two by two stack today. You wanna to make sure each briquette is touching. So just in a domino fashion, you want each briquette to touch. So it burns through slowly throughout the day. Now the briquettes today, we're using are quite small. So that's why we're going with a two by two stack. We're gonna go two on the bottom layer and two on the top. If you're using larger briquettes, you can go two on the bottom and one layer on top. Right, so now we'll start with the second layer. Same again, you're just doing it on top of the existing layer. Right, so that's pretty much our snake method done. So we're gonna start it up this end. As they're falling that way, it's just gonna slowly burn through throughout the day. If you wanted to get a longer burn time, this is probably gonna last about six hours. If you're going for that 10 to 12 hour plus sort of smoke, just make your snake longer. And you just wanna leave a gap for the lit briquettes, which we're gonna start the snake with next. All right, so now our snake's built, you can go ahead and get your lighter, your fire lighters, your chimney starter, and your smoking wood ready. All right, so we can go ahead and put a couple of smoking wood chunks near the start of our snake. And then in our chimney starter, I've got 12 briquettes that we're gonna get lit up right now. All right, and then we'll come back once the briquettes are nice, red hot and ashed over. All right, so now our briquettes are nice, ashed over and red hot. We'll put them in at the start of the snake. Now you just want to stack them up so they're all touching. I'm going to get another chunk of wood ready and when our pit's up to temp, we're going to put it right there and we'll also make sure that both vents are wide open for the start. All right, so I just like to let that preheat for a few minutes before we put in our cooking grate. And then if you've also got one, a wide meat thermometer, I like to put a probe on the cooking grate just so I can keep track of the internal temperature inside the Weber. All right, that's been a few minutes. Time to get the cooking grate and our meat probe on. So if I was cooking something, I'd have it sort of around here, away from the direct heat source. And I'd probably have my meat probe somewhere around there. So we'll close the lid and have a look at the internal temperature. All right, so we're gonna pretend we're gonna be cooking at the temperature of 275 degrees Fahrenheit or around 135 degrees Celsius. So you can see that's gonna start climbing pretty quick. When we get to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius, I'm gonna shut down the bottom vent to almost closed. We're not gonna to touch the top vent throughout this cook at all. And then we're gonna stabilize off. We're gonna increase our temp by opening up the bottom vent if we need to or closing it off even more if we overshoot it a bit. So we'll come back soon once we get to 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. All right, so it's been about two or three minutes and we're starting to near up to that 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 Celsius mark. So I'm gonna shut down that bottom vent to almost closed. So I've just got to open very small crack there. Might even close it open. Still got a very small crack where the oxygen can get in and hopefully that'll stabilize off right where we want to be. So we'll keep an eye on that. I'll graph this so we can see it skyrocket up and then it should just flatten off at where we want it to be. 
All right, so now's about the time I would put our meat in. The Weber's stabilized off really quickly. It is a cold morning, so I'm gonna open that bottom vent up just a little bit more, and we're gonna pretend we're gonna put our meat in at this stage. And I'm also gonna add that first smoking wood chunk. So as you can see, the Weber drops quite a bit of temp when you open the lid. So what we'll do is we'll open up that bottom vent a touch and we'll see where we stabilize off now. Right, so you're gonna have to do a bit of playing around on startup, especially when you put your meat in, it's gonna absorb a lot of the temperature, it's gonna fluctuate a little bit, but once you find that sweet spot and it's dialed in, once everything's settled down, you should be able to hold that all day. Even if you lift your lid, once you put your lid back on, give it five or 10 minutes and it'll go back to where it was. If not, just use that bottom vent. Like I said, if you want more heat in there, open it up a bit, give it five or 10 minutes, let it find its sweet spot and stabilize off again. If you've overshot your temperature a little bit, close it down a little bit by a little bit, give it five to 10 minutes each time just to find itself and play around with it from there. Find your sweet spot and let it do its thing. Don't panic and shut your vent down. That's gonna cut any oxygen that's feeding through the bottom vent and coming out the top and you're potentially gonna cause dirty smoke, which you don't want. So don't panic, use that bottom vent and you will have a good time. All right, so being a bit of a cooler morning, I'm gonna close down that bottom vent a bit closer to our target temperature. I'm gonna close it down at about that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius and that should stabilize us off, like I said before, that 275 Fahrenheit or that 135 degrees Celsius. So we're currently nearly at 240 Fahrenheit, so a couple more minutes and we should be at 250. I'll start closing down that bottom vent and we'll see if we can get it to stay steady for the rest of the day. All right, so I think we've pretty much found that sweet spot at around that 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius range. So like I said before, all we've done is we've made adjustments with that bottom vent only. If we were just under, we opened it up a little bit. If we started to shoot over, then we'll close it down a bit and you will eventually find that sweet spot. Don't worry too much if it fluctuates a few degrees either side. It's gonna with the wind, with the temperature as it gets warmer throughout the day. And the other thing is, there's so many other outside variables. If you're grilling in the direct sunlight, if it's the middle of summer or winter, your adjustments may or may not be a bit more drastic than what we've made. So like I said, just use that bottom vent as your Bible for the whole cook. Make your adjustments through that and you should have a good, easy cook. All right, so we're about an hour and a half in now and we've found our sweet spot. It's usually a bit quicker because I'm not doing it step by step showing is the whole process. You can usually find your sweet spot and get it stable in about 45 minutes to an hour. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a quick look, see how far the steaks burn through and it's gonna be a good opportunity to see what happens on the graph. I'm gonna graph this for you guys through the Inkbird app and we're gonna be able to see how it's come up, when I've opened the lid and how quickly it's recovered back to its target temperature. So we'll be able to see this. I'm not gonna make any adjustments when I open and close the lid and we're gonna see if it gets back to exactly where we are at the moment. So we'll have a quick look. All right, so as you can imagine, that's an hour and a half's worth. We're still getting heat from there. So I reckon another hour and a half will be about there. So that'll be three hours. By the end of that, we should be at about four and a half to five hours. And as you can imagine, if we built a snake twice the size, then there's your 10 to 12 hours. So we'll put the lid back on and let it do its thing. All right, so as you can see, we dropped about 50 degrees Fahrenheit just by opening the lid. So we'll shut it back up and see how long it takes to recover. All right, we're about three and a half hours in now. And as the day warms up, your barbecue is gonna do the same thing. At the moment, we're sitting at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 Celsius. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shut that bottom vent down a touch more and we should see that temperature slowly drop and stabilize off back where we wanted it to be at about that 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius. And the other thing you can do if you are battling temperatures for whatever reason, it's windy, it's really hot and you just can't get it down, chuck a water pan in, fill up a foil tray of boiling water and that's going to really help absorb some of that heat and stabilize your temperatures. 
I don't use them too often, but they do work. I have used them in the past. So that's just another idea. If you are battling temperatures, chuck one in. All right, so we're gonna shut that bottom vent down a touch like we said. We're actually only at about three hours and we're gonna see this on the graph. So I'm just gonna tap that back a little bit more and we'll have a quick look up to where we're at in the snake. So that's three hours worth, probably get another two hours worth there. So that's gonna be a five hour snake. Like I said, you can get that thing all the way around and that's gonna be 10 to 12 hours easy. So shut the lid back up. It's gonna drop a bit, but it'll come back up and we'll see this on the graph later on. All right, so it's been about 20, 25 minutes since we shut that bottom vent down to try and get our temperature back down to that 275 Fahrenheit or that 135 Celsius. Now our temperature's actually spiked a little bit. We're sitting at 304 and that's because of a couple of reasons. We opened the lid, we let heaps of oxygen in, which has obviously caused a little fluctuation and increase in temperature because it's fired up them briquettes. And the other reason is we're not actually cooking anything today. So that kettle is just full of oxygen at the moment. There's nothing to sort of absorb some of that heat and help stabilize our temperatures. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do what we spoke about before and put that water pan in. And then we can physically see on that graph a bit later on how that's gonna help stabilize our temperatures. So we'll go ahead now, we've got some boiling water, a foil tray, and we'll put it on our charcoal grate like we normally would if we were cooking something, and we'll have a look at what it does. All right, so we'll get some high heat gloves on, take our lid off, and our cooking grate. And then we'll put a tray in there, and put about a liter of boiling water in there. cooking grate back on and we will adjust our probe so it's a bit further away from the fire because we're starting to get a little bit close to where the snake's starting to burn. As you can see we've probably got an hour's burn time left of the snake which will put us at about that five hour mark. So we'll get our lid on and have a look at our temperatures. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes to an hour since we put that water pan in and it's done exactly what we thought it would do. It's come down really nicely and now it's just holding at pretty much our target temperature. So it's sitting at 279 degrees Fahrenheit now, which is great. That's pretty much where we want it to be. But like I said, if we did have a chunk of meat in there, we may or may not have needed the water pan. I don't usually use them, but like I said, that's a good example of how they can be useful if you are fighting temperatures for whatever reason. There's so many variables as to why you could potentially see temperature spikes or drops. There's weather, there's wind, there's the weather itself, there's vent control. All of them factors come into it. But like I said, water pans can help. There's a time and a place for them. It's helped us today, but we don't have any meat in there to sort of do the same thing as what the water pan's doing for us at the moment. So we're almost at the end of the snake. I reckon we should open the lid up and have a look at where we're at. We're basically five hours in now. All right, so like I said, we're about five hours in. We started just after 10 o'clock and it's just about three o'clock now. And we're getting our hottest part of the snake about here. So we've still got from there to there to burn. So I reckon that would be another hour or so of burn time. So we'll get this lid back on and we'll see how much longer this snake will last. We might even get six or seven hours out of this. Yeah, we'll see. All right, we're about six hours in now. I think the snake's slowly starting to die out. I was still sitting at about 250 Fahrenheit or that 122-ish Celsius. So let's open up the lid and have a look. All right, we are at the end of the snake. So that's six hours and we were basically halfway through and we were burning a bit hotter than what we had planned for. So as you can imagine, if that snake went all the way around and you only wanted to smoke at 250, you could definitely get 12 to 14 hours out of your snake. All right, so now our snake's just about done. Let's have a look at the graph. The Wi-Fi did drop out a little bit, so you will notice a couple of gaps in the graph, but let's have a look anyway. All right, our temperature graph. This is obviously startup. That first dip just before 10.35 was when we opened the lid to put our smoking wood chunk in, and then we were able to steadily climb up to our target temperature and stabilize off. On this next slide, you'll see a little dip where we opened the lid after an hour and a half to check on the snake. That's that small dip there. And then we were just able to recover without making any adjustments, and it sat around our target temperature all day. All we did, like I said, was control our temperatures using that bottom vent 
And as it climbed up earlier at the start, I just shut them vents down and it stabilized off beautifully as we can see here. We had a small Wi-Fi issue there where it cut out, but as you can see, it stays pretty much around the range we wanted it to. But like I said, as the day warmed up, so did our Weber. So we do see some spikes as the day warmed up. We had another little Wi-Fi issue there, but we're still around our range. And then we did have a small spike after this, but this is when we put our water pan in to help us stabilize off. So that's the dip there where we had the lid open. Unfortunately, it didn't capture it all, but you can see the water pan was doing a fantastic job and we just steadily declined throughout the day and stabilized off again. This last little dip here is when we checked the snake thinking it was near the end, but we actually had another hour left and then my battery ran out there. So that's pretty much the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Yes, it was a long video, but this is a real in-depth step-by-step method on the snake. Really good one for beginners, really good one for them long smokes. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.